I have a couple books before I start the message. I'd just like to give your attention to this one. How many have read this book? Yeah, if you're in Bible school, whatever. Um, it's my testimony of healing. Thank God for healing. It's not passed away. God is a healer. He said, I am the Lord that heals you. Yes. Past, present, and tomorrow. Amen? Yes. Always. Yes. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us. And Psalm 107, verse 20 says, he sent his word and it healed them. And so that's what this word, this uh, whole book is about, taking the word like medicine. And so there's healing scriptures, healing testimonies, healing lessons, talking about being filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, that river is healing. Amen. God wants you well. And half of this book is made of scriptures and uh, scriptures that you can speak and take God's word like medicine because there's healing in his word. Amen? Amen? Is there somebody here that could use some healing? Amen. Anybody in this room? I saw you with that pretty braid back there. Can you help me? There you go. And this book is another word that God gave to me. You know what? He always sends his word when we need it, doesn't he? Amen. And you, you go, God, what, what do I do about this? He sends his word. And so on the day that my grandson was um, diagnosed with stage four leukemia, he was overwhelmed, he had a huge tumor in his chest. And it was like, ah, that's an evil report, isn't it? And I was, God, what do I do? And you know what? He sent his word to me at that moment. And he gave me something to say. And he said, say these words. Satan, in the name of Jesus, ooh, he told me to talk to the devil. Ooh. He said, say these words. Satan, I break your assignment against Dylan. I could say those words because I'm a believer and I have authority. I've been deputized, right? And then he said, say the second thing, and this is it. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus has the power to enforce the authority that we have and we speak. Amen? So when you apply the blood, something changes. Wow, that was the beginning of a fight that really ended in great victory. And Dylan is nine years old right now and a happy little fella healthy and strong. Thank God. Hallelujah for the blood. Hallelujah for the word, the spoken word. And so this book talks about the covenant that you have because you are a believer and it's based on the blood of Jesus. And this will build your faith for your family. Amen. 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 Do you love your family? Yes. Come on. They're on your mind a lot, right? Praise God. They're on God's mind, too. And he wants your whole family to be preserved, to be blessed, to be healed, snatched out of uh, the devil's hands, right? Praise God. So anybody need this book? <laughs> well, let's see. Where's my, where's my carrier? There you are. Raise your hand. Okay, she's got it. All right, those books are half priced back there. I don't know, Mark might make them, I don't know. He always sets the deal. So if you got a, a good deal, just he, maybe we should find out the deal. Is it half price or what's he do? Start we'll start at half price, okay. <laughs> might work at the end a little bit. Uh, but uh, get some ammunition. I call the, the books back there, the, the products that we have, ammunition. And my husband is a hunter. Like yesterday, he went hunting. Amen. He said, I have a little time. I can go hunting. But before he went hunting, you know what he did? I saw him and Donnie. They went out behind the barn. You know, we live on eight and a half acres out, out beyond the city limits, just like a little bit. But we're beyond the city limits. <laughs> and so Darcy and I were standing there, and we were just talking outside, and all of us, we Forgot what he was doing. Forgot. He had his gun. He was going to make sure it was sighted in. 
And we heard, boom! <laughs> and both, she jumped and ran, you know, cover. <laughs> he was, she was making sure that the gun and the ammunition, it was loaded and it was going to hit a target, right? And so that's what you do when you get your Bible out. Anybody got your Bible today? Maybe it's on a, you know, I have mine on this, my iPad. But uh, everybody, you've got to have a Bible, yes. right? Remember that song, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. Come on. I stand upon the word of God. Amen. <laughs> so it's our gospel gun. We can't live, Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of my mouth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to look at the word today. And I love this place because it's full of the word. Y'all are full of the word. And you're being fed well. I'm so happy. And I mentioned today Psalm 107. That's the theme. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. The next verse says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, that let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So when y'all come in here, you start singing and stuff, what are you doing? You're praising God for his wonderful works and that he sent his word to you. Can anybody remember something that God told you? Or a scripture? How about you? No? Yeah. You don't have to tell me, but can you remember that he, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Maybe in your darkest hour he sent something, or like when you're just driving along, he said, oh, I'm reminded. Or when you go, you go over the notes that your pastor's spoken. Yeah. He was teaching me. He was talking to me. God is a God of the spoken word. In the beginning, God said, right? So he defines himself by what he does and what he speaks. God said, he is a speaking God and he creates everything with words, right? And so we're made in his image. We are made to be speakers. How many get up and say, say maybe the wrong thing? Oh, Lord. Good Lord, it's morning. But uh, we want to train our mouths to speak the word of God. And just like Mark had to get up and get that gun, put that ammunition in it, and make sure it was sighted in. We always want to make sure we got the word, right? Have it close. Why? Because you got an enemy that wants to snatch it, right? And we just don't want that to happen because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And that's, that's not just one time. It's ongoing every day, all the time. Amen. Can I hear a great big amen? amen. <laughs> so when Jesus talked to his disciples, um, he said these words in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. And then he described that faith by saying this, for assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatsoever he what? Says. says. So there's a lot of talking in this verse. So Jesus is going here and he says, have the faith of God. Therefore, I say unto you, whenever you hear Jesus say, therefore, I say unto you, get ready, because he's going to say something that's a law. It's the way God works. I say to you, it'll work for you. It'll work for your husband. It'll work for you. It'll work for a child. That's a beautiful baby, by the way. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, God has perfected praise to steal the enemy and the avenger. Even a child can speak and shut the door on the devil. Praise God. So God has made us, every one of us, to speak like him. Amen? And so Jesus was demonstrating to say to the tree, and that tree would dry up like he was talking about. And then he said, now it'll even move a mountain. So it doesn't matter the size of the problem, it has to be dismantled with your words. Praise God. Because Mark always says, mountains are made of words so they can be dis disassembled with words. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll try not to preach his message because then he'll, be, he'll say, that's my words. <laughs> no, they're God's words. <laughs> Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the what? The tongue. The tongue. And those that love it will eat its fruit. So we uh, are aware. We become aware that our words are so important. They're not just something to be said, anything. Or, or Mark says even song, you know, singing unbelieving songs and depressing songs or, you know. No, we got to listen to what we're saying and say, no, I'm not going to say those words. I'm going to say some different words. So examples are in the Bible. Don't you love your, I love the Old Testament. I love all the Bible. But the, the scriptures in the Old Testament have so many stories, right? We got Noah, Moses, Hannah. Come on. Yeah, you got your favorites. They're stories and those stories are used so that we can, they're examples, so we can look back and go, okay, all right, there are people like us. That was a woman like me. How did she do it? How did Ruth overcome? How did she get into Jesus' uh, lineage? Wow. Well, one story and one character in the Bible that we, I, I love is David. Do you love David? Yeah. Only a boy named David and only a babbling brook. We learned that in children's church. <laughs> only a boy named David, five little stones he took. <laughs> One little stone went in the sling, sling went around and round. Do you know that? Yeah. One little stone went in the sling, sling went around and round, round and round and round and round and round and round and round. <laughs> One little stone went up. And the giant came tumbling down. <laughs> I learned that as a child, right? It's a great story, but it's a wonderful uh, path we can walk in the same as David. Because David was just like you and me. But he had the word of God in his mouth. Psalm 1, what does he say? Blessed is a man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Woo! So David was a man of the word, a young child of the word, a teenager of the word. He kept that word in his eyes, his ears, his mouth, right? And he sang it with his guitar. And so uh, you know the story how he, his brother didn't like him. And, uh, but he had to bring bread, cheese to his brothers, whatever. And they were fighting Goliath. And everybody was afraid of Goliath, right? And so David says, yeah, I can fight him. And the reason why is because he knew the word of God. And this is what he did when he stood in front of Goliath. Who was what? How tall was he? Nine feet tall. Wow. It's like looking up at a tree. And he said this. You come to me with a sword and a spear <laughs> and with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. 
That's angel armies. This is in his imagination. He was convinced. And the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied, this day will the Lord deliver you into my hand, and I will smite you and take your head from you. And I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. He not only went after Goliath, he said, I'm going to give everybody's heads of the enemy. I'm going to give them to the birds of the air. Wow, that's pretty descriptive. <laughs> and to the wild beasts of the earth, and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Yeah, that's the a, that's a bottom line. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. So David was standing as a spokes young man for the whole army, for the king, for all of Israel. It doesn't matter our age or our gender. If we speak the word, if we're one with the word, if you are standing for God, hallelujah, you can be bold. And that's what David was. He was bold. And then you know the rest of the story. The giant fell. Amen. The stone went up, 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 and the giant came tumbling down, right? And then, you know, he was the hero of, of all of Israel. That's pretty good. Except that the king Saul hated him. He was jealous of him. And he was out to kill David. Remember the story. And so we move over here to um, 1 Samuel 21. And in this chapter, you see the story about how David and his friend Jonathan had to part ways because of King Saul hated David. And they cried and they wept. And David ran for his life. And he ran into this area where there was a king named Ahimelech. When David got there, David had nothing. He was hungry. He had no weapons. He was running for his life. In fact, Psalm 34 is everything he was saying after he got out of that. He had to act like a crazy man to escape the wicked kings. So this is what David did. He got before the, uh, the priest. He went into the temple. David ran to the temple every chance he could get. Because in the presence of God, you're going to find your answer. In the presence of the Lord, in his house. When you come to this house, come on now. You're going to have the anointing. You're going to have the presence of God. And you're going to get a word from God. And with that word, you can overcome whatever it is you're facing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's stop and let's say, thank God. Hallelujah for the word. <laughs> and so David, he spoke to the Ahimelech, the king, and he ate some. And then he says in verse 8, he says, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword, for I have neither brought my sword or my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said to David, I love this story. Do you want to know the rest of it? The priest said to David, the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley, it's hard to say King James, whom you killed <laughs> in the valley. He said, um, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. So David said, do you have any weapons in here? And the priest said, yeah, I got a weapon. And remember, when David killed Goliath, he ran up there 
That stone had knocked him down, but he might not have been dead. He ran up there. He's going to finish the job. <laughs> and he got this big old sword. It must have been huge for a nine-foot person. Come on. He had got it up. He finished that giant off. And he cut Goliath's head off. And Mark says he grabbed that head and took it to his tent. He knew how to get ahead in life. That's what Mark says. Anyway, so here comes the, the priest. And he comes out, and he has something. And it's wrapped up with a, with, a, with a cloth. And he unveils it. And it is Goliath's sword. The same sword that he picked up and whoop, chopped off the head of that giant. And that giant was dead. He would never rise again. That enemy was under his foot. Come on. And he saw the sword and he said, that's all I need. That's all I need. And he went on in his happy way to the next event. <laughs> Hallelujah. What do you have? What has God given you? What does it say in Ephesians 6? Look at Ephesians 6. Come on. In verse 10. What does it say in verse 10? Ephesians 6, 10. Do you know it? How many know that word? It needs to be your sword. You got to have it. It says, be strong. Can you put that? There we go. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Say that. Be strong in the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say that. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be empowered through your union with Christ, the Amplified Bible says. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. We're going to go down to verse 17. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation. And what's the last thing? The sword of the Spirit. What is that? It's the Word of God. But it's not just lying there. He says, take it. So just like David had to run over there and get that sword, he took it. It was in his hand. What a picture. You take the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. The Word of God. Hallelujah. It's quick. That means alive. Powerful. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of your soul and your spirit. How important is that? How many have ever had some crazy thoughts? I see a lot of agreement in this room. What's a crazy thought? You can't do this. That was dumb. What are you going to do about that? Or they don't like you. Or who do you think you are? You can't do that. You know, these thoughts that are in your head. That's where the battle is, right? Yes. Hallelujah. God has given us some weapons. And like Pastor Elizabeth said, when she was filled with the Spirit, that language and that river came up out of her spirit. And it was those words come out of your spirit. Thoughts come in your head, and that's where the battleground is. That's where the enemy can, you know, whisper lies. And not, not anybody is immune to that. Even Jesus, right? In Luke, the fourth chapter, he was tempted by the devil. And, he, and the devil said, if you, if you say you're the son of God, why don't you do this? Make bread out of rocks. Jump off the mountain, right? Bow down, worship me. But what did Jesus do? He overcame those thoughts 
with the truth of the Spirit of God. The sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where, how did that word get into Jesus' spirit? Come on. He studied it as a child. Right? How many like to study the Bible? Come on now. Right? You read your Bible? Read your Bible, pray every day. I'm going back to children's church, girl. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. <laughs> Amen. My little granddaughter sang that. I, we found a little video of her, Macy Claire. And she was, how old was she? Maybe three or something. And she was singing that. And then she sang the second verse. What is it? Don't read your Bible. Don't pray every day. And you'll swink, swink, swink. <laughs> Or don't read your Bible, fight, fight. What, what else do you say? So all these things, instead of reading your Bible, you're going to fight. You're going to swink. <laughs> you know, you're not going to overcome. But if we live with the word, speak the word, <laughs> I go to get my coffee every morning, and you know what I have inside the cupboard door? I have the words of Philippians 4. <laughs> Rejoice evermore. And then it goes on, it talks about, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything yes. with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that passes understanding will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. That's a good thought oh, to put in my mind in the morning, yeah. along with the coffee. Amen. Right? <laughs> Praise God. So what we do is we are strong in the Lord spiritually. And in the power of his might, and right there in that chapter, it says, put on the full armor of God. Aren't you glad you've got all your clothes on today? Hi. <laughs> yeah. You're dressed from head to toe. I don't see bare feet in this room. I don't think. And the full armor of God put something on your head, the helmet of salvation. The full armor of God will clothe you with the breastplate of righteousness. So you're bold as a lion. You remember that Jesus became sin for you so you can be the righteousness of God. And righteous people can pray and your prayers are effective. And though your sins were as scarlet, they shall be as well. Though they be red like crimson, you shall be white as snow. Righteous. Come on, say, I'm the righteousness of God. You got your, you got your breastplate of righteousness. Protect your heart. Protect your feelings. Protect your emotions. Amen. That's a gift. Hallelujah. Then put on truth. Your belt of truth. You know, uh, we had an uh, intruder come on our property MHM property yesterday. <laughs> Darcy happened to be there, and, and there were some other workers there, I think. And my family was even there. And Darcy encountered this, this man. And he looked like he was, had been running for a while, I think. He was dressed, but his feet were bare. He had been running from the law. <laughs> he had been going through the swamp. She said, where's your shoes? You need shoes. He said, well, I stepped in the mud and they came off. <laughs> it was quite a day yesterday. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, it all ended out. He was arrested. He was apprehended, all that. But he didn't have his shoes on. And you know what? He was trying to run through our property when it got to the rocks he had to go. Come on, when you don't have your gospel shoes on, <laughs> your, your feet shod with the, go with the uh, gospel of peace, you're going to be going. 
But when you have your gospel peace shoes on, you can stomp on the devil. You can take your stand and keep on standing. Hallelujah. God said this and I believe it. So get off. Get away. I cast down imaginations and every thought that's coming against my mind, that's not the truth. I'm standing in the truth. I have the belt of truth on. And you know when those police came, they had those big old belts and they were loaded with all the equipment they need. You know when you keep the truth, you have to decide thoughts. Is that true? Is that really true? Maybe they're just... Thoughts are things that you've heard all your life. All your life. But is it true? Does it line up with the word of God? If it doesn't, you take authority over it with your voice. No, that's not true. You cast down that lie that you can't do anything, right? You cast down that lie that you don't have enough money, you never will. You cast down that lie that your family is just a wreck. You cast it down, come on, and you take the word of truth. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. And then you put up the shield of faith, whereby you what? Quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. You don't have to do it. The faith that you speak, it becomes a shield all around. Praise the Lord. And no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper, right? Hallelujah. Woo! So that means you're talking. That means you're singing a happy song. Glory to God. Something's coming out of your mouth. Like David. Who are you? Giant? <laughs> you don't have a covenant. I do. That means you're falling down and I'm standing up, right? Amen. Praise God. And then take the sword of the Spirit. Finish it off. Finish it off. <laughs> that giant cannot rise if you finish it off. How do you finish it? With the sword of the Spirit. Now the Amplified Bible says this. Take the sword that the spirit wields. <laughs> who's on the inside of you? Come on, who's living in you? Come on. Yeah, Jesus, say, Jesus is in me. And Paul told Timothy, God has not given you the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1, 7. But he's given you what? Help me. Spirit of what? Shout power. All right, we're children's church again. Power. Power. Come on, let's just do some action. Power. Power. Love. And a sound mind. Let's do action one more time. Come on, everything has about our actions. Hallelujah. Say, I have a spirit of power. And love. And a sound mind. One more time. I have a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now lift your hands and praise him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who are we? We are overcomers. We're overcoming by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. Praise God. And so we resist the devil with our words, and we overcome. Praise God. Can I give you some scriptures you can jot down? Things to say. Okay? Things to say. Sometimes we've got to learn how to talk. <laughs> I love Psalm 34. The whole chapter is so good. I love to memorize whole chapters. So I memorize Psalm 23. That hooks up to Psalm 91, and then that hooks up to Psalm 27, like a freight training. Hallelujah. And you can overcome, and you'll go from here to there. Come on. God has destination for you this year. Hallelujah. He has a vision for you. He said, I know the thoughts I have for you, and they're good. 
to bring you to your expected end. Hallelujah. So we got to put his words in our mouth so we go, go where he has us to go. Psalm 34 is a good one. Psalm 34, throw it up there, and we're going to say it. Psalm 34, and yeah. Ready? Let's say this. And when we get to will, I want you to shout will. Okay? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be mine. Amen. How much? Continually, right? All right. Um, let's say this. Uh, let's go down to... Oh, I don't have that scripture part. Well, let's just go on to Psalm 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And go to, go to verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. What are we to do? We're to say, I am redeemed. Amen. Let's say that. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. And now we're going to Psalm 35. And it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Amen. Joel 3.10 says, Let the weak say, I am strong. I want you to look at your neighbors on both sides and say, I am strong. I am strong. Amen. And Psalm 27.1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. And I like uh, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. It says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly, what, say, what, let's say it together. I, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I just see that somebody's going to be going into the bank sometime with something. The Holy Ghost says, say these words before you get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Come on. And then Psalm 91, 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my what? My refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And then Ephesians 5.18 says, don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to each other in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts and to the Lord. Hallelujah. So the, the, our voices start uh, helping each other. Sing to one another. Say prophetic words to each other. That's what's been going on here. And y'all are being filled with the Holy Spirit by speaking. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And then I love Romans 8, 31. Paul said, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, are you going to be talking this week? Amen. Going to put that word in your mouth. Amen. 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 Say these words. Lift up your hands and say these. These are words that God gave to me, and I think you know them. But let's just say that because they're, they're covenant words. Say, God is on my side. God is on my side. The blood has been applied. The blood has been applied. Every need shall be supplied. Every need shall be supplied. Nothing, will be Nothing will be denied. So I enter into rest. I, into rest. I, know, I'm I know I'm blessed. I have passed the test. I have passed the test. And I will get God's best. Get God's thank you, Lord. And lift your hands and let's thank him. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
Your praise is in my mouth continually. Hallelujah. Let me hear your voices. Praise God. Give him a sacrifice of praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Father God, we praise you. We thank you that your word is in our mouths and we are overcomers and you feed us with your word. We are encouraged with your words. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Now let's just go. Woo. <laughs> Glory to God. Wow. Pastor Kevin, you have an army here. Nothing is impossible. This year is a breakthrough on every side. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's just shout unto God with a voice of triumph right now. Praise God. Thank you. Good. Hallelujah. All right, everybody. I mean, I know you can get anywhere in the world right there, baby. Actually, I just heard a survey. I think it was last week from Barna, and they were saying that the number one uh, thing that people are saying that they need uh, teaching-wise in the church is mental health. They said, man, if we could just get somebody to teach on mental health. Well, you just got about 35 minutes worth of uh, the best mental health uh, preaching and teaching you could ever hear because if he sent his word to heal you and to deliver you of of destruction, then if you can get the word in your mouth, then all things are possible to you as a believer. Mountains move, things change, and uh, he gave his word. How many of y'all know he's weaponized everybody in here? He's deputized all of you in here. That He's given you the blood. He's given you the word. He's given you the name, but it's not enough to believe it. You got to hook the believer up to the speaker. So uh, if you don't ever hook the, if you, if you don't ever make that connection, uh, uh, there's there's no bump, y'all. There, there's no. How many of y'all got that? How many of y'all got the low rider that comes through town? They got. That you can feel it, baby, when they come through town. They hit the stop sign. You can feel it. Uh, that They're rattling everything that they drive by. Uh, but if you unhook that big speaker, you don't have anything. You, uh, there's nothing in there. So uh, the challenge for us is to hook it, hook, uh, keep our mouth moving in the right direction. Because some of y'all know our tendency is to... Uh, go the wrong direction and talk about how bad things is instead of how big bad, uh, how big he is. So when the Bible says magnify the Lord, then the, you need to magnify him. Uh, don't magnify the mountain. Magnify him, who he is in you, his goodness. And you can get anywhere in the world with that teaching right there. I can tell you, uh, you're sitting in a room that got here because of teaching right there. So I've, I've got to sit under uh, that teaching for... I don't know how long. Mama knows long time. I was probably third grade, and I'm you know, third grade, and I mean, I, I'm 23 now. So, <laughs> thank you, Irvin. I got, what y'all laughing at? Y'all crazy? I'm just, I just made 23. Thank you very much. It's like, I, I mean, I just celebrated 23. So I don't know what y'all are thinking. Uh, hey, I'm going to uh, pray for you and give you a chance to respond to the word if, you, if you're uh, far from the Lord or something like that. And I know y'all have made so many confessions uh, already. But the way you got saved is by believing and by speaking. Uh, the way that salvation has come to everybody you know that's been born again is they heard about Jesus, they believed in their heart, and they spoke with their mouth. I mean, I'm glad he did the hard part. Uh, we get the easy part, which is responding, hearing, and, and responding to what he did. But what he did, no doubt, was difficult. I can tell you to uh, climb Golgotha and take on the sins of humanity and take on uh, all of the temptations and all of the plagues and problems. Uh, he did the hard part. But how many of y'all know uh, he did? And uh, he won. He conquered death, conquered hell, conquered the grave, got the keys, and gives us eternal life. But we have to respond to it, right? We have to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. So right where you are, if you don't mind, just take a second. I just want to make sure every person watching online, I want to make sure every person in this room, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if, you're not, if you don't know him, you say, I don't have confidence in my relationship with him. If you feel like maybe you did, you once knew him, maybe you got saved, you went to Sunday school, or 
you went to a kid's camp, but you're in a place right now, you say, I'm not following the Lord. I mean, I know 2024, baby, this is the way you start, not just your year, but you start your eternity, you start your life, your family, everything hinges on this decision. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if you don't know him, you're not following him, I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to bring you to a place of decision where you just say, hey, I'm not where I need to be, but you can be. You can be. So this has nothing to do with your neighbor. So just give me one moment with you so that I can speak to uh, your spirit. And if you're there and you say, I'm not where I need to be, then uh, you can be. And thank God for his goodness. Thank God for that verse that says, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever, forever and ever and ever. You can't get outside of the mercy of God. You can't sin. You can't get far enough away. Believe me, I tried. You can't outrun the mercy of God. If you're here and you just say, hey man, I, I need to tap into that mercy. I need to get under a fountain of mercy. I need to, I, I need the mercy of God in my life. Maybe you're here and you've got decisions that are, that, that, are, that are needing to be made. Whatever it is, I can tell you God's mercy is big enough, good enough, far enough to help you with anything that you could ever go through in your life. But, but you have to receive that mercy. You have to take it into your heart and say, man, I, I, I want the mercy of God in my life today. So if you're here, you need prayer for anything. If you're watching online, if you're in this room, I want to make sure you just say, hey, I need God's mercy. I need God's provision. I need God's protection. I need God's salvation. I need salvation to come to my house. If you're here and that's you, would you slip your hand up right where you are? I'm looking across. Yes, 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 yes. Lots of y'all. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his mercy. Come on, I need God's mercy every day. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. And he will. Thank God. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Lots of you guys. Thank God for the mercy of God. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Thank God for his mercy. God, that we lean in to you. God, that we just take a moment, we pause in your presence. There's a little word in the Psalms that's just the word selah. And it just means pause in his presence. And it would be easy for us to move this along and kind of go into something else. But just to take 60 seconds and just say, God, we pause. We allow you to wash behind our ears. We allow you to clean our minds, clean our motives. We allow you to give us a new true north that we go the right direction, that we get back on path. God, we thank you that we pause in your presence. Come on, there's healing in his presence. Just, just a few moments in his presence can undo any mental health, can undo anything just to have that time where you breathe, time where you take in the spirit of God. Take in the word of God, and then out of your mouth, out of your belly, flow rivers of living water, fountains right out of heaven. God, we thank you. We pause. We take a moment. Lean into you. God, we thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Come on, just receive his loving kindness. God, I receive your loving kindness today. God, I receive tender mercies today things that I shouldn't have done, that I did do, things that I didn't do, that I should have done. God, we thank you that your love and kindness and tender mercies is enough. It's greater, 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 greater than all. Come on, the Lord is greater than all. God, you're greater than all. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Those of you uh, that, that raise your hand, I'm going to give you an invitation to come down here. I'd like to place my hand on you. I'd like to pray for you. So if everybody would, if everybody would, would stand up, if those of you that raise your hand, if you would like, I would like to just put my hand on you and bless you if that's okay. If, if you don't mind, just kind of make your way down here to the front. And then we're going to pray together and we'll go into the rest of whatever. I mean, I know this is why we come to church. This is why we're here. We're here to, to, to meet with him. Receive him. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. God, we thank you for the infilling, the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All throughout the Old Testament, people were thrown in prisons or they were thrown in lion's dens. They were thrown in fiery furnaces. I mean, I know they, 
terrible situations. I mean, I know God's a deliverer. God's a deliverer. God's a deliverer. And actually, he'll get in the fiery furnace with you. They said, I thought we threw three in there. I see four. I mean, I know he doesn't just stand on the outside and try to pull you out. He actually went into death, went into hell, went into the grave so that he can rescue. He, he calls it to the uttermost, to the uttermost, that he can do it to the uttermost. Let's make a confession of faith and just receive the mercy of God right where you are. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the goodness of God that leads me to repentance. I thank you that you come into my situation. You are my deliverer, my healer, my strengthener, my, my mercy. I receive the mercy of God. I lean into your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I confess the Lordship, the delivering power of Jesus Christ in my life, in my mind, in my heart, in my future, in my family, my relationships, my finances. There is nothing that could bind me or keep me from your mercy. And I receive the mercy of God. I thank you for your goodness towards me. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you for every person down here at the front. God, that as their hands are going up, yours are coming down. God, that as they reach out to you, God, that you reach out to them. God, I thank you that they leave it all at the altar. Whatever it is, that it's left here. That the chains are left here. God, that the any type of mental bondage, whatever it is, is left here. God, we bless them. God, we bless them. God, we bless them. God, we bless them. We bless them. in the name of the Lord Jesus, the head of the church. God, we thank you for your help, the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, out of their belly flow rivers of living water. God, I thank you for the compassion of God that they fail not. God's compassion for you, it fails not. God, I thank you that your compassions, they fail not. They're new every morning. God, we thank you that we bless these people. God, that you took, Lord Jesus, you blessed them. You took them in your hands. You bless that you're a blesser. When you're not a curser, you're a blesser. God, we thank you for the blessing of God. Lord, give you vision, vision, new vision for this year. See like you've never seen that it'll be clear before you. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord, we bless. God, that we bless, we bless. God, we thank you that we bless. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your help. God, we thank you. Times of refreshing come from the presence of God. The Lord refresh you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine on you. Come on, you just say, I'm refreshed in God's presence. I'm refreshed. I'm refreshed. Come on, it's like a cool breeze on a hot day. Just let him refresh you. Come on, it's like a cool breeze. Come on, it's like a cold sprite. Just let the Lord bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God, we thank you. It's why we came, why we're here. <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord has a way. He just melted off. Just let him melt it off you just melt you light that candle that fire you just melt the wax it just runs off God we thank you for washing cleansing the rebirth newness of life God, we thank you for it in Jesus name Jesus hey I got one thing Y'all doing okay? Y'all all right? Y'all okay? The Lord is good. How many y'all glad you came to church? How many y'all know church never ends? We just transition. We just transition from, from the pew to the parking lot. 
parking lot to our car, to our car, to our house, our house to our job. But uh, you are the church. You carry the church. You carry the Spirit of God in you. You carry the anointing, the power of God. It's That's why I came. How many of y'all know? That's, that's why he showed up. He said, hey, you don't have to go to a hill anymore. I don't have to go to a, sp- a special spot where... Uh, he said, hey, I'm going to live in you. I want to move inside and become a dwelling place. So it's good to have that opportunity. It's good to allow the Lord just kind of say, hey, do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Help how you want to help. And he's a redeemer. He's, uh, he is so good. So I mean, I know he's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. I think so. We, we think the Lord's going to make us do something. Uh, how many of y'all know he's not? You'd be here every week if he did. Uh, you wouldn't skip for the cowboys or the saints or whatever you would you wouldn't miss uh, uh, he's a gentleman he's a gentleman that's why he's like a dove the Holy Spirit descends like a dove how I many y'all know he's not a buzzard he's, he's, not, he's not a crow he's not a crow he's not going to come eat off your table on vacation you got to run him off no 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 the Holy Spirit's like a dove he's a gentleman and thank God for his presence his goodness Hey, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to, uh, some of you, I don't know if you already plan on doing this, her husband, Pastor Mark, which is my pastor, will be teaching here just a couple of of minutes at the 11 o'clock, but uh, they're going from here. I know this year they're going to Zaire, they're going to Lebanon, they're going to Colombia, so this is what they do. They go into, the Bible says, going to all the earth. And uh, many of us never have that opportunity, but just because you go don't mean you can't send. So in the, in the New Testament, you had goers and you had senders. And uh, so they, how many of y'all glad they go? Uh, they go. Go, go teach the Colombians uh, how, to, how to hook their believer up to the speaker and go teach uh, people in Lebanon, people in Zaire. And I think they've written 40-something books now that are translated in 40-something languages. I don't know. I can't keep up. Every time I get around them, there's another book, another language that's, that's been written. So uh, I want to give you an opportunity, if you want to give towards that, support them, then I'm going to pray for that. And uh, I think they're going from here. I don't even know, Pastor Trina. Do you know where you're going next? You, Fort Worth is next. In, in the morning, Fort Worth is, is, is next. So... Uh, and then also want to remind you that they do have product outside out the outside those doors if you want to get anything. Last thing I'd say is I would get their app. You know, their app is so useful to me. All the messages are on there, and uh, they're free. So you get in your car, get on the treadmill. Amen. I mean, I love that treadmill. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you can use their app, utilize their app. So let me pray for your giving towards them. God, we thank you for the opportunity. You said that whenever we receive the word, God, that we give of what we have. God, we take this opportunity to help them go. We help them go. You said to go into all the world. Preach, teach, help, minister. God, we thank you for the life of Pastor Trent, a life that's being lived well. From a little girl, teenager, all the way up, ministry all these years, going, going, preaching, teaching, helping. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that we have opportunity to partner and to help them go. So God, we thank you for every dollar to be used well, to represent you well, and to reach people for your kingdom. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. So you can text to give, all that type of stuff, and then as well as uh, envelopes and the old school way. The old school way is the, the, that. So, hey, let me bless you. I know y'all moving around. Let me just bless you before you go. I'd like to bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, God bless you. You're dismissed.